Imagine a system that adjusts the difficulty level as you progress, constantly providing you with the resources that you need when you need them. That's incredible. It's like having a custom designed learning experience tailored to your individual needs and pace. Mm. No more one size fits all approach. Exactly. This is the TOEFL Speaking Prep Podcast for the AI era. All right, so today we're diving into a topic that's super relevant for a lot of folks out there, especially in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the TOEFL exam, you know, that test that can like make or break your dreams of study abroad. Right. It's basically the golden ticket to universities in English speaking countries. And we're going to take a deep dive into the challenges Pakistani students face when prepping for it. We've got some research here, some stories from students and teachers. Yeah. We'll even touch upon how AI is changing the landscape of test prep. Buckle up. It's going to be insightful. Well, the TOEFL exam is more than just a test, right? Yeah. It's a standardized benchmark. It's a way to measure English proficiency for those who don't speak English as their first language. Yeah. And it's recognized by a whopping 11,000 institutions. Think about that. 11,000. 11,000, particularly in popular destinations for international students like the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and Australia. Wow. That's that's massive. So yeah. we were just talking about getting into college. Yeah. No, we're talking scholarships, research opportunities, oh, wow. even better job prospects in today's globalized job market. I mean, this is a test that assesses the four core skills, essential skills reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Right. You need to be able to demonstrate proficiency across the board. And that's where the pressure comes in, right? Absolutely. Because for Pakistani students, this research really highlights the unique challenges they face. Yeah. And where do we even begin? Well, let's start with the obvious. There's a world of difference between everyday English and the academic English required for the TOEFL. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're talking about a whole other level. We're talking complex vocabulary. Yes, Intricate sentence structures, formal writing styles, the whole nine yards. I can only imagine that's a steep learning curve for many students. Absolutely. And our research actually mentioned how limited exposure to English media and conversations, especially for students in rural areas, makes this gap even wider. It does. I mean, they might be able to get by in daily life, you know, yeah. ordering food, having a basic conversation. But suddenly they're facing academic texts and lectures that are peppered with words they've probably never even seen before. And I remember that story from the research about the student who kept using, I think it was criterion when they meant criteria. Oh, right. Singular versus plural. Cost them points on the writing section. Yeah. yeah. It's those subtle but important distinctions yeah. that can really trip you up. Absolutely. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, there's more. Then comes the issue of resources, or rather, the lack thereof. Oh, right, because it's not enough to just be motivated. You need the tools. You need the right tools. Yeah. A lot of Pakistani students face a real uphill battle when it comes to accessing quality study materials. TOEFL textbooks, for instance. Yeah. They can be very expensive. Oh, for sure. And then prep courses. They're often financially out of reach. Yeah. And even when you venture into the world of online resources... Finding something decent, something that's actually helpful, can be tough. It's like trying to climb a mountain with no gear. Yeah. Some platforms are too basic. Others are poorly structured, not really designed for someone learning English as a second language. It can be super frustrating, right? Absolutely. Like you're so eager to learn, but there are all these roadblocks in your way. And I know that we talk about the students a lot, but what about the teachers? Is there enough support on that front? That's another big challenge highlighted in the research. There's a real shortage of instructors who are properly qualified. Oh, really? And have the experience to teach those specific TOEFL skills. Right. It's not just about knowing English well. It's about understanding the intricacies of the test itself. Right, because the test has its own little quirks. Time management for each section. How to build vocabulary effectively. Understanding those specific expectations for the speaking and writing tasks. Oh, for sure. That requires specialized training. It does. And I know that the research also mentioned how the issue of large class sizes can make it difficult for students to get that individual feedback they need, especially for those crucial speaking and writing sections. Exactly. I mean, imagine trying to learn to play a complex musical instrument in a room packed with other students. Right. And you've only got one instructor. Yeah. You might be able to pick up the basics. Yeah. But to excel, mm. you need that one-on-one -on -one attention. You need personalized guidance. 
And unfortunately, the challenges don't stop there. Oh, no. We've got the language barrier. Right. We've got limited resources. Yeah. And a shortage of qualified teachers. But there are significant cultural and technological hurdles to overcome as well. Cultural hurdles? Yeah. In an English proficiency test. I mean, how does that even work? It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You see the TOEFL, while aimed at a global audience. Right. It's still very much rooted in Western culture and those academic norms. Mm. And this can be tricky, particularly in the listening and speaking sections. So you're saying it's not just testing their English. No. It's also testing their understanding of Western idioms and accents and humor. Absolutely. I mean, imagine listening to a lecture. Yeah. Full of slang and cultural references you've never encountered before. Mm -hmm. It can throw you off completely, especially when you're under that exam pressure. Yeah, especially when the clock is ticking. Exactly. And I'm guessing when we're talking about that technological hurdle, you're referring to the fact that the TOEFL is computer-based, right? Yes. And access to computers and reliable internet isn't a given for everyone in Pakistan. Right. Some students might not even have much experience with this digital testing format. It's yet another thing they have to grapple with. So on top of everything else, they have to deal with that unfamiliarity with the technology itself. Right. And the potential anxieties that come with that. Exactly. And let's not forget the elephant in the room test anxiety. Oh, right. Everyone gets nervous before exams. But for Pakistani students, the stakes are often incredibly high. Yeah, it's like their entire future is riding on this one score. The pressure to get a high score for university admissions, for scholarships, right. it's immense. And this anxiety, coupled with all the challenges we've talked about, yeah. can really impact their performance. They might know the material, right. but their nerves get the better of them. It's that classic cycle, right? Pressure leads to anxiety, anxiety affects your focus, and then poor focus leads to lower scores. Mm. It's like a snowball effect. So is there any hope? I mean, what can these students do to actually overcome these obstacles? There is absolutely hope. And this is where things get really interesting. Let's shift gears and talk about some strategies for success. Okay, I love a good success story. And we'll start with targeted training. What does targeted training look like in this context? Well, enrolling in a quality language center or utilizing online platforms that offer TOEFL-specific coaching can make a world of difference. It's about going beyond just general English practice. So no more cramming random vocabulary the night before the exam. Not if you want to truly excel. The research emphasizes how important it is to focus on specific areas like speaking fluency and writing coherence. Okay. Those are often areas where non-native speakers need that extra attention. Right, because you could have the most impressive vocabulary in the world, but if you can't express yourself clearly and cohesively in those speaking and writing sections, it's not going to matter. You're right. But even with the best training in the world, I know that those time limits on the TOEFL can be super intimidating. Absolutely. Time management is key. Developing those strategies for each section is essential, like learning to skim effectively for reading comprehension mm -hmm. or mastering note-taking techniques for the listening section. Those are things that can save you precious minutes. So it's not just what you know. It's about how you apply it under pressure. Exactly. And speaking of leveraging what we know, this is where technology, particularly AI, is starting to play a game-changing role. Oh, AI. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, imagine a tool that gives you personalized feedback on your speaking skills, pronunciation, fluency, vocabulary, all those things that are crucial for that TOEFL speaking section. Hold on. Are we talking about like an AI tutor for speaking? In a way, yes. Cool. It's called My Speaking Score, a prep tool powered by SpeechRater, and it's already being used by over 100,000 students. Wow. Okay. I need details. Yeah. What is My Speaking Score? How does it actually work? Well, it's a platform that utilizes advanced speech recognition okay. and AI algorithms to analyze your speaking performance. You basically practice speaking responses to TOEFL-style prompts, okay. and the AI provides you with feedback on your uh, pronunciation, fluency, vocabulary usage, even grammar. Wait, so it's like having your own personal coach, but without the hassle of scheduling or the high cost. You got it. And that accessibility is especially important in places like Pakistan, right. where traditional learning resources may be limited. This is amazing. It's like AI is leveling the playing field, giving students access to tools that might have been out of reach before. It's a game changer. Yeah. And its impact goes beyond just the TOEFL. Really? AI is transforming how we learn and prepare for tests in general. It's a paradigm shift. 
That's incredible. We've covered a lot of ground here. Let's take a moment for all this to sink in, and then we'll come back and explore this bigger picture of AI and education and what it means for students all around the world. Sounds good. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about my speaking score and how it's changing the game for TOEFL speaking prep. It is fascinating. You know what really struck me about it, though? Yeah. It's like personalized feedback has always been like a huge advantage yeah. for those who do well on tests like the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. But now with AI, it's like it's becoming more accessible to everyone. It's pretty cool. It really is. Technology can really bridge that gap. Yeah. But we have to be mindful of the potential downsides as well. It's not all sunshine and roses. Oh, OK. So what are some of the concerns? Well, I mean, access is still a major issue. Even with online tools, not everyone in Pakistan has reliable internet access, right? Yeah, that's true. AI solutions are only effective if students can actually use them. Exactly. So even though tools like my speaking score are a step in the right direction, mm. we still need to tackle those underlying infrastructure challenges as well. Absolutely. And what about the technology itself? Are there any concerns about bias? I mean, could a student with a rural Pakistani accent yeah. be unfairly penalized by the AI compared to someone with, say, a more standard American accent? That's a really valid concern, and it all boils down to the data that's used to train these algorithms. Right. If the data isn't diverse, if it doesn't represent different accents and speaking styles, yeah. then the AI could inadvertently perpetuate those existing biases. So it's not enough to just develop these tools. No. We need to make sure that they're developed responsibly yeah. and inclusively. Absolutely. We need to constantly evaluate and re refine these algorithms. Right. Make sure they're fair and accurate for all users. And what about data privacy? I mean, these AI tools collect a lot of information about how students speak, their strengths, their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Are we sure that data is being protected? That's a crucial point. Transparency and responsible data handling are absolutely paramount. Students need to know how their data is being used. Yeah. They need to be assured that it's being protected. It sounds like we're still figuring out a lot of the ethical implications of AI in education. Yeah. It's exciting, but we need to proceed with caution. We do. We need those clear guidelines and open discussions about the responsible use of AI, not just in test prep, right. but in all areas of education. And what about the teachers themselves? I mean, yeah. some might worry that AI is going to make them obsolete. What's your take on that? I see AI as a powerful tool, but it's not a replacement. Right. It's more like a superpowered teaching assistant. You know, it can handle those repetitive tasks like giving basic feedback, tailoring learning materials. Okay. But it frees up teachers to focus on the things that AI can't do, like fostering creativity, yeah. building relationships with students, inspiring a genuine love of learning. Yeah. Those human elements are still so important. Absolutely. I love that. It, it's like a dynamic duo, the teacher and the AI yeah. working together to create this more personalized and engaging learning experience. Exactly. The best learning environments are going to leverage the strengths of both. Yeah. Humans and AI. It's a collaboration, not a competition. And that brings us back to the bigger picture, right? The challenges <laughs> Pakistani students face with the TOEFL, they're kind of a microcosm of oh, these man. broader issues we see in education. They are. Access, equity, mm. preparing students for a future where technology is just becoming increasingly important. It's not just about one test, right? Yeah. It's about equipping these students with the skills they're going to need to thrive in this globalized world. English proficiency is key, but so is the ability to adapt and learn new technologies. Absolutely. And all the solutions that we've been talking about, targeted training, embracing technology, mm -hmm. fostering that collaboration between humans and AI. Yes. It's all part of creating a more equitable yeah. and accessible education system for everyone. Absolutely. It's pretty inspiring to think about how AI can be this force for positive change. It is. But we still have to be mindful of those potential pitfalls, right? It's about striking that balance. It is. Combining human ingenuity with the power of AI, yeah. that's where the real magic happens. We can empower learners from all backgrounds to reach their full potential. You mentioned earlier that my speaking score is just one example of mm -hmm. AI and test prep. What other innovative tools are out there? What else is on the horizon? Oh, there are so many exciting developments. Like what? Well. There are platforms that are using AI to create personalized learning paths. Oh, wow. So they can adapt to each student's individual strengths and weaknesses. 
Imagine a system that adjusts the difficulty level as you progress, constantly providing you with the resources that you need when you need them. That's incredible. It's like having a custom designed learning experience tailored to your individual needs and pace. Mm. No more one size fits all approach. Exactly. And there are AI powered writing assistants okay. that go way beyond just grammar and spelling checks. They can help you with essay structure, suggest stronger vocabulary, even analyze the clarity and coherence of your writing. That sounds like a dream come true for anyone who struggles with writing. It is. It's like having a virtual writing tutor right there with you. Right there with you. And then we're also seeing things like virtual reality being used to create these immersive language learning environments. Oh, wow. Simulations for practicing real world conversations, even AI that can analyze a student's emotions during learning to provide tailored support. It's like science fiction, but it's happening right now. Yeah. It makes you wonder what the future holds. It really does. The possibilities are endless, and we're just at the beginning of this AI revolution in education. Mm. But as exciting as it all is, we need to acknowledge the challenges. Yeah. The potential risks as well. What kind of risks are we talking about? Well, one concern is over-reliance on technology. Oh, okay. AI can be fantastic. Right. But it's not a magic bullet. Students still need to develop critical thinking skills, a problem-solving mindset, yeah, a genuine love of learning that goes beyond just getting good grades. So we need to be careful that we don't create a generation of students who are just really good at following instructions and passing tests, yeah, but lack the creativity and the adaptability to thrive in this complex world. Exactly. And then there's the digital divide we talked about earlier. Right. We need to make sure that access to these incredible AI tools is equitable, not just for students in affluent areas, but for everyone, regardless of background or location. It's like we're on the verge of this technological leap forward in education. But we need to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to benefit. Absolutely. And that's why those conversations about the ethical implications of AI in education are so important. Yeah. We need to be proactive in addressing issues of bias and privacy and access to make sure that these powerful tools are being used to empower all learners. This has been such an insightful conversation. I mean, we've gone from talking about the specific challenges Pakistani students face with a TOEFL mm -hmm. to the broader impact of AI on education globally. It's incredible. It's been a fascinating deep dive. And it's clear that we're really just scratching the surface of what's possible. Before we wrap up, though, I want to go back to something you said earlier. Okay. About fostering this genuine love of learning that goes beyond just grades and test scores. Yeah. In this age of AI mm. and standardized testing, how do we cultivate that intrinsic motivation in students, especially for those who are facing so many hurdles already? That's a great question, and it's one that we're going to delve into even further in the final part of our deep dive. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to explore the human side of learning in the age of AI. Welcome back to the deep dive. Before the break, we were talking about how to keep that spark of genuine learning alive. You know, even when you've got these standardized tests and yeah. AI looming large. It's an important challenge, though. We have to remember that real learning goes beyond memorizing facts or just acing a test. Right. It's about nurturing that curiosity, encouraging exploration, and fostering this lifelong love of learning. Yeah. How do we actually do that, especially for students who are dealing with so many obstacles already? Yeah. How do we get past the pressure of exams and grades mm -hmm. and tap into that intrinsic motivation? One key is creating learning environments that are engaging and relevant connect what they're learning to their interests, to their passions, to the real world around them. So less rote memorization, more hands-on experiential learning. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Think project-based learning, where students are working together to solve real-world problems or inquiry-based learning, where they're encouraged to ask questions, explore different perspectives, mm. draw their own conclusions. That definitely sounds a lot more engaging than passively absorbing information from a textbook or a lecture. It is. And it helps those students develop those critical thinking skills, those problem solving abilities, yeah. and ultimately a deeper understanding of the material. And what about the role of technology in all of this? We've talked about AI for test prep, mm -hmm. but can AI also be used to spark that love of learning in students? 
Absolutely. Technology can be such a powerful tool for engagement and personalization. I mean, think about virtual reality field trips. Oh, yeah. That yeah. can transport students to ancient Rome or mm -hmm. interactive simulations that let them experiment with scientific concepts. It makes learning come alive yeah. in a way that traditional methods just can't. Yeah, it does. And you can tailor it to each student. Yeah. You can, AI-powered platforms can adapt to different learning styles. Mm -hmm. They can provide targeted feedback and support. Right. And even suggest learning paths based on a student's interests and their goals. So again, it's not about replacing teachers, right? Yeah. It's about giving them more tools mm -hmm. to better engage and inspire their students. Exactly. And let's not forget about the importance of fostering a growth mindset. Oh, right. Remind me what a growth mindset is again. A growth mindset is the belief that your abilities and your intelligence aren't fixed. Okay. They can be developed through effort and perseverance. Okay. Students with a growth mindset, they embrace challenges, they learn from their mistakes, mm -hmm. and they see setbacks as opportunities for growth. That's such an important message, especially in a world where social media often promotes comparison and perfectionism. It really is. We need to help students understand that learning is a journey. Yeah. It's not a destination. Right. It's about continuous improvement, not just about achieving a certain score or grade. So how do we actually instill this growth mindset, especially for students facing all the pressures of the TOEFL and all the challenges we've been discussing? Well, it starts with praising effort and perseverance. Okay. Not just innate ability. Encourage them to step outside of their comfort zones. Yeah. Take risks. See those mistakes as learning opportunities. And I imagine modeling that growth mindset ourselves is pretty crucial. It is. Students learn as much from what we do as from what we say. If we show them that we're lifelong learners, constantly seeking out new knowledge, right. new challenges, they're much more likely to embrace that mindset themselves. So it's about creating this culture of curiosity and resilience yeah. and a genuine love of learning, both in our classrooms and at home. Absolutely. And that's something that no AI, no matter how advanced, can truly replicate. That human connection, that mentorship, that inspiration, those are essential elements of a truly transformative educational experience. What a powerful thought. It brings us back to those Pakistani students prepping for the TOEFL. You know, we've explored all those challenges and we've talked about some really amazing technological solutions. We have. But ultimately, it comes down to empowering them to become lifelong learners. It does. To embrace education with passion and purpose. Absolutely. It's about nurturing their potential. Mm. Not just for success on a standardized test, but for success in a world that demands adaptability, creativity, a thirst for knowledge. And that's something worth striving for not just for Pakistani students, but for all learners around the world. It is. This has been an amazing deep dive. We've oh, covered gosh. so much ground. Mm -hmm. I hope you found it as insightful and inspiring as I have. Thanks for joining us on this journey of knowledge discovery. It's been a pleasure. And remember, learning is a lifelong adventure. Embrace the journey, stay curious, and keep exploring. Until next time, happy learning.